How are we doing, everybody? Hola. Welcome to another episode of Getting Jiggy With It. I'm Lou. I'm Audrey. And what are we doing today? We're doing our favorite 10 games to play to players. For two, two players. Play two well, players games that we played, play two player games that we played this year. Because, of course, we haven't played every game out yeah. there, so we don't really have a full uh, top 10 yet. But this is, of the games we played this year on the channel for you guys, these were the ones that we felt worked really well at two players, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're gonna have Audrey do all the talking because for some reason my voice does not want to cooperate today. Um, so the first game, or number 10, is... For number 10, we have Dragon Pets. The number 10 is Dragon Pets. So Dragon Pets is a little card game that uh, requires you to pair and match colors to gain coins and to capture the dinosaurs so you make combos that dinosaurs you make, or dragons eh, sorry dragons <laughs> they're kind of the same oh, well, dragons <laughs> so you need the female and the male and the same color so you take turns and you can also get the, the opponents or you can see what they are trying to do and you can kind of get uh, what they want so if, of course if it is convenient to, for you yeah, um, so it is it's a little worker placement you get to put your workers out there uh it it works off of the mechanics that you roll dice and you share those dice so mm -hmm. that's one thing that i feel with like two players that work very well yes uh because the the there's not a, it's not a big grid it was a four by four grid so it was like 16 total out there um as soon as you do the um, capture action. It brings all the dra the dragons back. I was about to say dinosaurs too. <laughs> it brings all the dragons back. Um, so you have to kind of hedge. When do you want to pull them back? When do you want to uh, place your worker out there? Do you want to spend money? Because that's how you win the game is getting the most money for the best dragons. Um, and do you want to spend that money so you can get more dragons out there? Do you want to spend the money because, oh, I've only got one dice and I can't do anything with the dice. So it, I think in two player it works very well. Um, it can go up to four player, but I'm really curious with the four player because there would be more competition on those tiles. Everything would be flipping over more. Your dice pool would be smaller. I feel that like I feel like it would limit a lot of what because you could do Because the amount of turn. dice is the same. I need is four dice plus same. the one that plus the one that changes. That changes. So sometimes with two players, you cannot do much if the if the other player already used most of the dice so yeah, yeah that's right so i feel more, more higher players, players it, it may not be as fun um yeah of course we haven't given it a chance we'll have to give it a chance at a higher player account but the whole point of this video is we did like playing this at, at two, two players. players uh the art is 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 cute. cute uh we did play it on our extra life game day stream and of course uh some lucky viewer did win a copy uh so uh, hopefully they will enjoy it at two player account as well but this is numero Yes. Yes. Ten. All right. So that goes to yourself. Number nine is a beast of a box. So number nine is Merchant's Cove, which is probably shocking to some people to see Merchant's Cove on a best games at two players. But the nice thing, or I guess the thing I noticed with Merchant's Cove is there's not a lot of player interaction. So each player is doing their own Different thing, things. right? Mm -hmm. So in Merchant's Coast, you are a merchant. You're trying to make goods to sell to the different adventurers coming into your realm. It is an asymmetric game. Each character that you can play, each merchant, basically plays a little bit different. You've got one that's a dice roller. You've got one that's a roll and write. Um, you've got one that is a marble. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's a marble. What it, the alchemist? Thing? Alchemist. Yeah. So they, they've all got very different, different mechanics and how they play, which makes it very enjoyable because that adds a lot of replayability, right? Because each of us can play each one of those characters and basically be playing almost like a brand new game. Now, I imagine at higher player count, of course, it would be more fun as well. Uh, but at two player count, um, it worked we really enjoyed. well. We enjoyed a lot because, like I said, there wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot of like take that there wasn't a lot i mean you're not attacking anybody um you can manipulate the market by seeing what your opponent wants so there there is some player interaction so if you don't we don't want to say that oh if this is great because it's like a solo game no there no. there is player interaction <laughs> mm -hmm. you you do choose which adventure and what boat it's going to come in so if you see oh your opponent has no large green items but you can make a large green item and that boat's got a lot of green guys on it i'm going to put mine there to make that boat come in right. that way 
they're either forced to try to make a large green item or they're just not going to be able to sell anything that round. So there is that interaction that's coming uh, through the game. Um, the art, we love the art. Uh, the Miko is the one that uh, did this art. Uh, we like his art in almost any game that he's created. Uh, we do have to hunt down some more. And the components are also very nice. Yes, the, the components are very nice. Uh, you get miniatures, meeples, uh, everything out there he likes. Right? Yeah. Worker placement. Replacement. Moving things around. <laughs> moving things around. <laughs> cards as well. Cards, that are yep. cards. So there's everything. Yeah. So that is our number nine merchants co. Let me put this over here and I gotta keep it out of the way of my my hot tay. My tay. I mean me tay pat me throat. Cheers. Number eight, we have Clank. Clank, uh, well, this is Clank is upside down, but yes. <laughs> okay, this side is upside down. Uh, so in Clank, you have your meeple and you need... It's a part building game. Deck building. Deck building? Yeah. <laughs> I knew I said that wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, also you have to collect to collect items. So you 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 play your cards. You that are. It's, I like it that it is not difficult to actually. I mean, you don't lose beforehand. Like you always have to have an option to make um, to play more cards, to buy more cards. So you can always keep going. And in this one, you test your luck. So you can keep going and try to get as many. Um, what is this? Valuables. Uh, valuables, yeah. yeah. Or items uh, while you are in certain part of the board, which is the, the dungeon, and then trying to go back. So, uh, two players, it worked really, really well. Yeah. And um, well, we played a couple of the different expansions, and each one yes. adds. Each one of the expansions adds a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, very unique. It's one of the first deck builders we played. Uh, we didn't even know what deck builders were, uh, but it, it is. It's easy to pick up, easy to learn. Um, as they say with most games, right? Hard to master. Um, yeah, but you're, you're, it's just a really fun game of, like Audrey said, push your luck. Exciting. Every time you, you get the dragon to, oh, you, and hope you don't get the clank. Yeah, to get the clank. Hope you don't get the clank coming out. So it is really, really good. Yeah, and same thing. I mean, again, this is a uh, one, two, four player game. So I believe at three and four player, it'll probably be just as fun. Um, we did play with our niece at three player, um, mm -hmm. and it played it played really about the same. I, I didn't feel like there was any advantage. I mean, I guess one advantage some people might say is, is your market turnover would be a little bit quicker, so you don't end up with a whole bunch of stale cards that you don't want. But yeah. there there are people that house rule that right. That if both players go in a two player game and nobody buys anything from the market, you refresh the whole market. But of course, you could get you some dragons if you do that, mm -hmm. right? Um, but even a two player, I think it works pretty good because there's very rarely that I think that we left all the cards out there for a really long time like eventually one of us bought a yes. card right yeah. so um but that is number eight numero ocho uh clank a deck building game and that is an earthquake which you guys probably did not enjoy that sound at all. or that one or that one <laughs> uh you got to change your order you got the tiny game on top of the uh, because down I thought the, we were keeping now, it well no down here that's fine but on top we have to put them in a stack how are you gonna you're gonna put you're gonna put one of the tiny little boxes and then <laughs> make it switch. He's doing the same right here. But they can't see that. Shh. <laughs> All right, so nice. we are on to numero siete. 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 Seven. Number seven. So number seven is Marvel Villainous. Uh, so this one is a. I don't know how to explain this game. It's just. You, you are you are here. You are a villain, uh, same as Disney villainous, uh, and we like both of them about equally well. We do like I, I think this plays better two players. Uh, but you are playing a villain, and you have a realm. In your realm, you're going to be playing cards to try to accomplish your goal. Uh, your goal may be to defeat certain people in your opponent's realm. Your goal might be to, or Loki in the expansion is to spin mischief. But first, you have to make mischief before you can spend it, right? Oh, I got a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to yell at her, but I'm like, oh, well, there's no use. There's no point. Uh, but yeah, so you, you got to spin mischief, make mischief. Uh, so each person has their obligation that they have to complete. Um, the way that the interaction works in Disney and Marvel Villainous is, is there's something called a fate. So you can basically play a fate card against your opponent to cause certain things to happen. 
Now in Marvel Villainous, I like some of the things that they improved upon because I think it makes it work a little bit better at two players. There's a event that can pop out from the Fate deck, uh, which may be a fate that impacts one player or the other, or it could be a group shared uh, event that both players have to try to accomplish. Um, you also have the cross realm play because all these are Marvel and they're all in the same Marvel universe, right? You're, you're all on Earth or well, I guess Thanos wasn't on Earth, but, <laughs> right? but they're all in the Marvel universe. So you can go into their realms and actually some of the characters, you have to do that to be able to accomplish your goals. So I think that's the reason I like this a little bit more than Disney Villainous is because you get that interaction into the other realm. With, with Disney Villainous, I felt like it's you. it's you. And the only thing you did is you look at your opponent. Oh, they might win. Let me fate them. And that was it. I mean, that that's your interaction with your opponent yeah, in Disney. But in Marvel, I think when you get those couple characters that can interact with each other's realms, having the events which add a little extra thing that one or both players need to try to accomplish, I think is nice. Um, we like Marvel, right? We do. So Marvel is one of our favorites. Um, what about you? What, what, what I, I from like, two players? Uh, from two players, I think that I like that the turns they could take long, but not it's not very hard. Like you, because you you are in in one what is it? In a, yeah, but in one section, and then oh. you you know that you cannot do something else there, so you have to plan ahead, and then you have to know what is what you're going to do in the next one. So I like that the time that you have. During the opponent's turn is really is 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 enough, and it is She's just for, for you to plan. Else. Hmm. Bella's trying to get into trouble. It's just what she does in the middle of the video. <laughs> so yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's it's a really fun game. And again, two, two players worked fine. Um, I, and I think this is maybe like where Disney might be a little bit better. And, and even this is if you're at a higher player count, three, four. Um, this one they don't honestly recommend high player counts compared to Disney Villainous. Disney Villainous, they're, they're fine with going six, seven, but I've heard that starts to drag the game on. Uh, you also have what's called king making, and that's one of the, the uh, benefits of two player is you don't have that. Like you're not you're not all as a team, if you're playing a five player game, four people could team up on the one person that they feel is gonna win, right? You have that, you don't have that issue with a two player mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Um, but that is one thing I think I'm gonna bring I did. We did bring this for Thanksgiving. We didn't get a chance to play it with my sister and her family, uh, but we might bring this down uh, for Christmas when I've got to go down. Um, not when I've got to go down, but when I'm going to go down. <laughs> it's like a, it's like an obligation. I must go down to my sister's for Christmas. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how it works at a higher player count. Uh, really, the only change is you have more people to fate against, uh, and there were times, and I might even house rule it ourselves. There were times where we played certain cards that we couldn't take advantage of because there weren't additional people, right? Sometimes when we pulled the fake oh, card, we okay, couldn't take yeah. advantage of it because there weren't additional people yes, and it would have benefited true. you as a character if that could have happened and, and we couldn't do it, right? Uh, but otherwise, great game. Definitely recommend Marvel Villainous and that is our number seven. Number seven. 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 You're going number six. Number six. It's a very tiny game. Very tiny game. This is Squire for Hire. Squire for Hire? Squire for Hire. Squire for Hire. Hire for Squire. I said, it, I said it right for the first time, and now you make me doubt. Yeah, Squire. <laughs> she always says Hire for Squire. She, I, I've said it a couple for of times. For the first time. <laughs> so, so, Squire for Hire is a. <laughs> it's a. Um, uh, like a tile placement game but in cards so you have to um, you have some quests and each character needs some items and then the idea is to place the cards in a way that you can like make visible the item that you need so at the end you can complete it and complete the, the quest and therefore make points yeah right yeah so each character is gonna have their own like conditions like one guy wants swords and coins one guy wants a Next magic wand jewelry. and yeah jewelry right so they're all they all want different things usually it's like a weapon plus a treasure that they that they want comboed uh this is an actual two-player game so of course it's perfect to play in two players now if you have the expansions you can combine them together to make it a four-player game 
uh, but it, it just works really well at two players. Uh, really thinky, a, lot, a little bit of strategy. Um, and also, not it doesn't take that, but you have where your opponent, you know what they need, mm -hmm. and you finish the quest, and you sometimes have to take a card you don't want just so they just, have just so they can't so they can't get it because that would give them like five points and you're like yeah. no, I don't want them to get the five points right um, so it is very very interesting very neat game uh, we got this and the other expansions for it uh, which add a little bit more variety a little bit more player powers uh, for example one of them it allows you to combine two characters so then you have like two uh, objectives yeah. that you complete um, the art's cute. Um, we do like the art, the little, the little art. I don't know who the artist is. It's John Merchants. So John Merchant, I know, made it. I uh, don't know who the artist is. Somebody knows who the uh, artist the is. Card? No, no, no. All right. But yeah. So that's Squire for Hire. Number six. Number six. All right. And we, I guess we'll, have to, we'll, just, we'll just put that right there. because okay. <laughs> It's, it's going to get squished on top of the other one if you know one. All right, so numero cinco or number five for those English speaking viewers is Wolf Walkers. Uh, so Wolf Walkers is again, another two player game. So again, perfect for two players um, in which you are trying to build out a tableau. You're trying to build out your story. Uh, it is based on Wolf Walkers, uh, the movie, the original film on Apple TV. We still haven't gotten to watch it because we don't have anything Apple related, no. I, I guess. Steven does. Our, our, our brother-in-law, Steven, he's got it. So I guess we'll I'll have to ask him uh, if I can watch yeah. it on his. Uh, but yeah, so this one, you're trying to build up that story. So you have two types of cards. One is a story card. The other is a challenge card. You're trying to line up your story to match those challenge cards. So at the bottom of each card, there's like a symbol. So one of the challenges might be only have wolves in this row. That means that each card in that row, you want to have that wolf symbol, right? Um, if you have a card that doesn't have a wolf symbol, then it's not going to give you additional points. Uh, you might have one that says, put three trees in the shape of an L, right? So then you need to make sure you can make a shape of an L with three or four cards that have the tree on it. Uh, so it's very puzzly, very thinky. Works very well at two players, which I guess it would have to since it's a two player game. Yes. Um, the art, the art's really pretty, mm -hmm. right? Um, what do it's you like not, about it? I like it that it is, I mean, it's very thank you, but it is not very difficult. And you have always chances to complete another objective that you have not even seen. So you can at the end make more points uh, than you think. And um, yeah. then there are a couple, couple small expansions, which add some variability to it. And it all comes in the core box uh, where you can add like certain uh, abilities that you can take each turn. Uh, there's some that just add some additional rule adjustments, like for example, um, extra cards in the market, so there's more cards to choose from. Uh, you take two cards on each turn instead of just one. Um, so there's there's a lot of variability also in this, so each game can really play a little bit differently. Um, the other thing, and the nice thing about this, um, and a lot, of, a lot of these small games we've noticed, a lot of them are very language independent, so we might make a language independent series out of the different nice. games that we have that, even with the amount of text, we feel are probably language independent. But this is this is one that would definitely make the list because there's no, no language. language. I mean, the rules, right? So as long as you can have somebody translate the rules, but the actual cards and the iconography is this how is you visual. play the game. That That's it. It is all visual. Um, so that is Numero Cinco, Wolf Walkers, My Story. Um, so there we go. And then we are going to number four. Number four. We have, or I have a lot of attachment. A lot of attachment. For Pokemon. Pokemon. TCG. TCG. Trade card game. Trading card Trading game. Card yes. Game. So Pokemon is a card game with Pokemon. <laughs> um, <laughs> each Pokemon has an ability or an attack. Uh, or something. <laughs> yeah. So it is for two players. It is for two players. Yeah, I don't. I don't. There's probably variations, but Pokemon is a two so, player game. Yeah. It's it's yeah. it's um it's very nice because there is obviously a lot of uh there is it was actually at the beginning hard for me because I had to know exactly or very well what what 
what he had on his cards and what their Pokemon were, go were able to do through my Pokemon so I could protect them. Uh, but once you do that, once you're able to do that, it is really, really nice. Uh, it's Pokemon. I like it. Yeah, so the art, yeah, the art, and the anime uh, is really nice. It is, it is the first game that, of course, I introduced Oddity to. Yeah. Um, when I was like, well, what is something we can play together? What's something we could go to, like, our local hobby store and maybe play together? Uh, it's the reason I started the YouTube channel in the first place. I had actually picked up a couple packs from Walmart and said, hey, I got this. Let's do this. And I was like... By the way, people also open these things, and people watch people opening these things. Why don't I open these things? <laughs> uh, so, of course, that is uh, part of where our name comes from. If you want to know where uh, Getting Jiggly With It comes from. It's, of course, Jigglypuff, who isn't necessarily our favorite Pokemon. It's just our mascot, um, right? But uh, we, we do like Pokemon. Uh, we try to buy each of the uh, starter decks that comes out. I uh, thought so we can play them on the channel for you. That way we're still playing some Pokemon content. I don't know many board game channels that play a lot of the different card games. Um, they, they focus on board games, and of course we're doing card games, board games, everything. Um, but it, it's really simple to learn. I mean, it is made for kids in general, right? I forget what the age is. It's like six and up or something. Um, something like that. Something like that. Uh, oh yeah, six plus. There you go. Six and up. Uh, so it is meant to be uh, simple to learn. Uh, hard to master like most games. Uh, the nice thing about these is they're pre-constructed decks. You don't have to oh, learn yeah. about how to build a deck. It's already built for you. Um, they may not be as optimized, but they do even have decks out there now that you can buy which are more like uh, league-ready decks. You could take that pre-made deck and play it in leagues, right? Or you could take that pre-made deck, swap out a handful of cards, and, and make it really powerful, really good once you learn how to play. Um, Real simple mechanics, you play a Pokemon, you add power to the Pokemon, you attack with the Pokemon. You have items and different things that you can play to enhance or to search through your deck. Uh, first person to get six prize cards wins. Um, so very simple, very easy. You guys can go back and check out a lot of our Pokemon gameplay footage. Uh, this box here we have not opened. Um, I will be getting it opened and we, will be, we probably will have it played by the time this video goes up. This is in the past, but you'll be watching <laughs> it in the future because that wibbly wobbly timey wimey <laughs> stuff happens <laughs> uh but yes yeah, so number what do we have to number four didn't make our top four. three but number four is pokemon the trading card game uh, that goes on your side all right now we're into the top three which makes oddity very very excited yeah very excited for oddity so number three is santorini so Santorini is a strategy type game. Um, you're trying to move your little worker around the board, uh, which always appeals to Audrey, getting to move workers around the board, uh, to basically build up the houses or the, the I guess it's the houses, the, the apartments, the building, buildings, buildings. the buildings, <laughs> the buildings of Santorini. Um, and the first person to be able to build up and then move their way up to the very top uh, level wins uh, but it's not as easy as that right so your opponent can put these little blue domes on them meaning you can't get up there they're also trying to get up to the third thing so it's it's a cross between tic-tac-toe and chess i think is is kind of how we described yeah. it a little bit you're, you're just trying to figure out where can i go where can they block me off where can i use what they're using what is he going to do as what, well? yeah what is he going to do um the the other thing is it's very Expandable or not expandable there, there it's it had a lot of longevity in terms of the gameplay because or a lot of variety too because there are a bunch of god powers in here There's an expansion pack. Uh, there's a new expansion supposedly on the way uh, the creator said the creator said um, So there's a lot of replay in it because every god acts different uh, There's heroes. So say if you're gonna start playing against a new player. So you become an expert of Santorini oddity uh, she could then play against uh, somebody using a god power, but she would use a hero, right? Because the hero's a little bit weaker, one-time ability versus god having it the whole time. So you can you can also adapt based on the other players. The art's cute, right? Very cute. So we Miniature. like miniatures. Are cute. Oh yeah, there's miniatures. We painted the miniatures. I've did a good job painting the miniatures. Uh, the chibi art, right? We like the chibi, cute, small art, so that's beautiful. Uh, now we are going to also get Ragnaroks. Uh, Ragnaroks is from the same creator, same artist. Uh, so we think that's going to be really fun. Another little strategy game. We'll have to compare. We'll have to make a video on that. Once we get it and play it, you know, 
which one do we like better? Do we like Santorini better or do we like uh, Ragnaroks better? Yeah, and with two players is is really good because um, all you have to do is what? Well, you always have, if you play with cards, you always have your card, right? And that's what you do throughout the round. Your abilities. Mm -hmm. And so you have to just move your character and put a dome if you can. And that's it. So it's very quick as well. Yeah. So it does one to four players, uh, or not one to four players. <laughs> you can't play by yourself. Two to four players. Um, two players, I think, probably works the best. Uh, we've not played at three. I don't think four works at all. Uh, I mean, I, I get it, it's available, but four player, you're basically each person's controlling one worker. So you kind of have to work with the other person. And I feel like you don't have to do a lot of whispering or, you, you know, you're going to have to talk it out what you want the other person to do and hope they actually do it. Hope the one person isn't right. more of an aggressive player where, uh, you know, they're taking over. Three player, three player could probably be interesting, but I think the problem with three player is. You have to worry about two strategies at one time. Like you have to worry about two different people. You know, I feel like same as tic tac toe, same as chess. Two is two is where you want to be, right? If you want to yeah. be able to just go that head to head, you throw the third player in the mix. I think it might just start going off the rails. I think I I, I think for two players is is perfect. Yeah, doesn't mean we won't try the three players. Uh, maybe we will. Uh, yeah. But that is our number three game. And the Santorini. Santorini. You gotta say it with the Italian accent, right? But that is not, that is, is in Greece? Oh, Greece, right. Say it with the Greek accent. <laughs> Adri doesn't speak I'm, Greek. I'm Adri speaks Spanish, French, English, and at once upon a time she took some classes for Italian. Yeah, I, I need to do that again. Again. But number two, numero number dos, two. which they probably saw, but you couldn't see whether they saw because of the thing over the thing that you can't see oh, the I'm thing. Sorry. <laughs> she, she gave her the surprise before we showed it. But it is land versus sea. Land versus sea. This is, uh, it's up to four players, but we enjoy it at two. And it is a um, tile place, placement game. And uh, the idea is that one of the players you see, one of the players you see is land land <laughs> and you need to put the tiles in a way that you complete but it's enclosed Enclose. a body of water or a body of land each tile they are double faced faced double faced faced double faced and they have is different yeah. so you always have a surprise and you can I mean your opponent will always see one face but you can actually use the other side if you if it is if it fits and it has each tile or some of them has the option to steal like a symbol to steal a tile from the opponent or to place two right yeah you get to take a, take a second placement mm -hmm. yeah so there are also like quests about completing um coral uh, chains? Mountains. Yeah, or, quarter or mountain chains. Or, or mountain? Mm -hmm. Is it mountain or caravan? Yeah, well, it was mountains for... No, the caravans were the other the other thing. So they're, they're just okay. advanced scoring rules. Is, oh, is what okay, they are. okay. So, it's actually one of my favorite games. Yeah. You're not supposed to give away secrets. We don't know if the top 10 video is up yet. But I, I didn't say which one. Oh, okay. It's just one of her favorite games. It, it might not even made the top 10. You never know. You, you have to watch know. the other video. I mean, out of... I don't know how many games. This one of my favorite. <laughs> out, of, out of the 68 <laughs> games we've played this year, this is one of our favorite. Uh, but yeah, Land vs. Sea is actually one of the newer games to our collection. Again, I, it works very well with two players. I, I think even on the box, it's called a puzzle game for two to four players. Yeah. I, 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 Two, yes. Three, I think might be fun, but one person isn't actually playing Land or Sea. I, that's what I mean. So I'm not really sure how that works. I think it's more like they get to mess people up. I don't, I don't know. Uh, four again, kind of like Santorini. You're playing on teams, and I, I don't know that. To me, I I don't understand. I, I get it for sales purposes, but I don't understand when a game says it's four player. What would be so wrong with saying one to three? Same with right. Santorini. What, what's wrong with just calling it a one to three player game? Um, I think they threw in the four just for the extra sales. So somebody's like, well, I, we're a family of four. So it's like, we want our whole family to be able to play, so they get the extra sales. Uh, but same thing, you're on teams, so 
Same problems that with Santorini could exist. You have to whisper and talk about, show each other the, 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 the tiles, um, and then you would have to hope that one person doesn't control the other person's actions or what they right. do, right? Uh, but the art's great. I mean, it's, 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 it's small art. It's very, it's different, but it's really interesting. Uh, there's a lot of little hidden things on all the tiles. Like every tile has these cute little hidden things, little rabbits, little, little uh, people, uh, different animals. Um, there's a chicken, like you can see here. There's a rooster. A rabbit you probably, yeah, you probably can't called. see, but there's a rooster on stilts fighting a lobster. <laughs> and that's on one of the tiles. Like the art is beautiful. The art's great. Uh, it's very thinky, very quick too. It's not a not a very long game. Um, you do have to go through all the tiles that are in there, um, but it makes for a very quick, easy, um, fun time. Right? We, we played it a couple times. Again, this was another one we played recently on our Extra Life game day. Uh, definitely a game that we would recommend if you're playing two players. This definitely works well at two players. So that is number two, land versus sea. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, probably there, then there, something like that. That works. Your little, your little tower you're building over there. All right. So number one on the countdown of the two-player games that we enjoyed playing this year in 2021. It's like Casey Casey. I hurt my voice a lot. <laughs> You should, you should not do that. But I gotta be myself. I can't, I can't <laughs> read my own voice. But number one, see, now I had to take a drink for more more suspense, suspense right? Or unless unless somebody's already fast forwarded past that part. But <laughs> our number one game uh, should be no surprise to anybody. Our number one game is Marvel United. Uh, so we have the all in Marvel United. We've got the all in X Men United coming in. Uh, but we really enjoy this at two players. I would say we'd enjoy it at larger player counts, but I'll give I'll give some reasons why I don't know if I would enjoy it as much as at a, at a four you know plus player count. Uh, and even with the new expansions, you can play with more than four players. After the X Men came in, right? You can play at five players because somebody could be the villain. But in Marvel United, the, the base game, the core game at itself, um, there is a villain. A villain has a master plan. He's trying to accomplish something um, on your turn. You get to play a card. That card is either going to have some type of action ability, which could be to take an action, to attack, or to move. Uh, there's also wilds, and you're basically playing out what they call a story, right? You're playing them around. We, don't, we can't play around because we don't have enough space for that normally when we film. But you're playing each card in sequence. After you take three actions, then the villain gets to take his action. He's going to move around the board as well to the, to the six different locations causing havoc, causing mayhem. He's going to go bam, right? Uh, effect on it. Uh, the game is simple, uh, but it's complex in the way that it you have to think and plan out to see what's going to be the best way to take out the villain. Now, you're not supposed to openly communicate. You're not supposed to say, well, I have an attack and I have a fight. And I, and I know some people do, especially because, you know, it is a kid-friendly game, a family-friendly game, and you want to be able to play with your family. But um, I really think that that little bit of thinkiness and trying to figure out, okay, do we want to take out this challenge over here first or do we want to start rescuing civilians or do we want to start rescuing thugs? Because each villain can benefit from something, right? Maybe, maybe one of them benefits the more civilians that are out there. Maybe one of them benefits the more thugs that are out there. Maybe one of them benefits because he's got six henchmen that chase you around the map, <laughs> right? All that can be very, very bad for you. Um, you also get additional complexity. They have advanced modes where you take those wild cards out. Uh, and then a lot of the complexity comes from the uh, different expansions. Uh, the future expansions of bosses get harder and harder. Rhino, who we haven't played yet, but Rhino can one shot people first round, just done, game over, like immediately, right? Um, and they, Simon actually had to come in and say, uh, don't put this card on the top. Put put this, you know, <laughs> make sure a different card is on top, you know, and then 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 shuffle the deck, right? And then put that card on top, right? Uh, because it's just it's so unforgiving. Some of the advanced ones we played the Infinity Gauntlet on the channel, we played the Spider Verse. We played the yeah. Sinister Six. We played all the bosses in the core box. We played Cerebro mode with. Um, we played Cerebro mode versus. Well, we did like a hodgepodge because we played two characters each. So we kind of played Cerebro yeah. mode because we we basically played two handed with two characters, but we mixed the deck together like Cerebro mode and the X Men. 
Uh, and then we did play the verses as well. Uh, the verses, that is one I would say might not be as good at two players. I would have to say the verses I don't think was as fun um, as working together to beat up the bad guy. I actually like of this when we play, I mean, the two of us is the way we play it. So, because at the end, the, the challenge or the, the objective is for both. So, yeah. I mean, of course, I learned it by playing with your with your help. But I think that it is nice for two players because because of that. You communicate and you say, oh, no, but I wanted to do this. Oh, okay, or not. Uh, maybe this is better. So I, I like that part. Yeah. So it, it's very... The co-op, the co-op aspect. Yeah. And, we, and we've learned that a lot of the games we like are the more co-op because uh, we don't like to normally be mean to each other. Normally. But there are, <laughs> there are some games like uh, Here to Slay and a couple other ones that didn't quite make the list um, that we enjoyed as well. Uh, that had a little bit more of that take daddiness where you're we're actually actively attacking each other. Um, but this one doesn't have it. You get to work together, defeat the big bad. Marvel is, and always has been since I was young, reading the comic books, my favorite IP. And as we've mentioned in other videos, it is the first IP or the first fandom geekiness that I introduced Oddity to. And then it's gone downhill from there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and Star Trek and... We've, we've, I've, 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 kept, I've steered you clear of the DC movies for the most part. <laughs> Transformers, right? You watch Transformers. Sure. Uh, so it does have that extra. The theme helps a lot, right? Because it is something we enjoy to play. But I think the game is is solid for the type of games we want to play. It, it may not be for everybody. It may not be the biggest, thinkiest game out there. But even other channels I've seen have rated this very high. And their only question is, how long would it stay in their collection? I don't think this would ever leave my collection. No, no I, <laughs> no, I would never let it go. Well, what if it's worth like $500 because we painted the mean to us? We can paint again. Well, we did that twice already. I could paint again. <laughs> so Always. We'll, we'll paint again and we'll sell, we'll sell the whole Kickstarter all in, all painted. That'd be way more than $500. Shoot, just one Kickstarter was $500. Well... I, I could paint it. You could paint it again. And that, that's something else. Again, any game that we get to spend more time together, and since we get to paint the miniatures together, that's going to add to it as well. So mm -hmm. if you're like, if you're thinking, oh, there, oh, some of these other games should have been our number one game, those few extra things make a world of difference, right? Being able to spend time together painting, it's a co op game, so we get to spend time together. We're not worried about beating each other up right so we just get to have this working together right it is it's nice it is nice so we have a lot more of this content to go i think we have about four expansions i think there's four there's three or four main expansions left we have asgard black panther guardians of the galaxy okay so i think there's three expansions left but then we have all of the villains in the kickstarter box and all the heroes in the kickstarter box and then of course we've got marvel x-men coming next year if you guys want to be able to watch lots of marvel united content or watch more of these top videos of games that we played throughout the year uh next year we're gonna have a lot more of this type of content coming in this year was our first year so we were just getting our feet wet in the mm -hmm. hobby we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have much opinion on like these are our favorite mm -hmm. games or we're going to compare this game to this game because we didn't have them this year uh, but next year we should be going full steam again want to watch it subscribe like bell notification leave us a comment down below uh, if you have played any of these games, and if any of these games you think would make your top two-player list uh, of games to play with, well, I guess two people, significant other, anybody, couple, yeah, two. your friend, your buddy, your, your daughter, mom. your mom, your dad, your, your dad, whoever. Uh, but until next time, guys. Adios. Peace.